I was asked if if the person can hey, yo is it okay you know Nikki wants your number is it okay if I give it to her or do you want me to do it on three that's that's how it was asked and I was like no you could give it to her right it's fine can't believe that I just that this nigga is really telling me like yo Nikki wants your number like you you want you want me to call you on three way like you know I could be on the phone with you and I'm like nah 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 she could call yeah go ahead you can give him my number. I'm like right. like this nigga both you know what I'm saying like what the fuck she calling me for right. what could she possibly be calling me for and then she said I heard you know I got word that you was willing to help us out in this situation that's when it clicked oh okay now I see what this is about. Now I see what the hey Jen, what's up? Yo, I heard you was it now I see what that's about. So it wasn't that he just wanted to see Jennifer. It wasn't that, you know, I made such an impression on him when he was a kid hanging out with my brother that he just, you know, wanted to hit me up and see it was because there was a fucking hidden agenda. Hmm. This wasn't me. I don't I don't I don't have a plot. Where's my plot at? Hey guys, it's your girl, Crystal Nicole. So in today's video, we are going to be going over the entire phone call situation and all the harassment claims that actually come after this phone call that she is actually suing for in her lawsuit. As I want it to be crystal clear that Jennifer is not even claiming harassment or intimidation from this call in her lawsuit for this to even be a reason for concern for anybody as there was no crime committed and the whys of the reason this phone call ever happened or why the number was given out has already been answered through Jennifer's and now Kenneth's own statements and those things are what's actually important when it comes down to this situation the why Everybody in this story seemed to be under the impression that Jennifer wanted to recant yet again. And why Black, the only person in this story who seems to be harassing her to do so, is not the one being sued. So bottom line is, both women agreed to speak with each other. Apparently, both women exchanged numbers with the other to have this conversation and had no problem speaking with the other. So if they had no problem communicating, then why does anybody else have a problem with them communicating? If there is an issue with Nikki wanting to speak with Jennifer, then there should also be an issue with Jennifer wanting to speak with Nikki. So the why it happened is what the problem is here. Nikki and Kenny were reached out to claiming that Jennifer wanted to recant. They were not the ones who reached out to her trying to get her to recant, which is the only reason for the contact. This would have vindicated what Nikki had already said about Jennifer, even if it wouldn't benefit Kenneth failing to register case. It would have definitely helped the case against New York, though, as it Excuse me. As to if he should have even been on the registry to begin with, given this was her second attempt at recanting the claim. So Nikki would have definitely wanted to verify this and get it on record. Had they not been told Jennifer wanted to do this, Jennifer would have never gotten the time of day from Nikki. So instead of everybody saying if Nikki had never spoke to her or involved herself, None of this would happen. Let's change that to if Jennifer had never involved herself in their situation, we wouldn't even be hearing about this. 
If she didn't know why they were getting ready to speak to each other, why did she think they were getting ready to have some type of non-disclosure agreement talk to stop speaking on each other like she told the Daily Beast? Jennifer was fully aware and in agreement of this recant and why she was being put in touch with Nikki. And she never really says no until Black put the money in her lap, giving everybody the impression that she wanted to go through with this, but just didn't want it put on her record for the world to know. And if it had to be, she wanted to get paid. Just like all of her family apparently wanted a cut out of the deal if she actually went through with it for getting her to do it, such as Black, her brother, and this anonymous cousin, as we will see from this video. So pay attention and listen to the timeline Jennifer gives on this entire situation and how it went down. Afterwards, we will go through each thing she stated as her claims and why she has no case against the Petties and why everyone should stop questioning why the Petties did anything and start asking why Jennifer did everything that she did. So let's go ahead and get into that. Listen, I don't move in my life trying to get over on people so that that's not my first impression to think that way, that that's what was happening to me. But here's a timeline. So I get contacted by this person that says they're coming to judge her, that they just purchased the property out there and they're doing da 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 da. The very next fucking day, my brother hit me up out the blue. Like, yo, Jen Jen, yeah, this nigga just turned to da 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 da. And I'm like, what the fuck? So I hit the dude that came to see me that supposedly is supposed to make all this go away. Like, yo, who you talking to? Like, how my brother come at me with and talking this, th these numbers? You know what I'm saying? Whatever have you. And, and this nigga, he coming to me like from the street. Oh, you know, you know, Kenny ain't got that kind of bread. You know, ain't no. So he disputing. What the fuck my brother and these niggas is talking about. You know what I'm saying? Like, yo, I don't pay no mind to that. I don't know what the fuck is up. Da, 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 whatever. So I didn't learn Ganks was a part of this until later. You know, to a, a little while later. You know what I'm saying? Whether it was a couple weeks or whatever. I didn't I didn't learn his name. I heard of the Jamie character. Right. But it wasn't until my brother called me one day and was like, Yo, sis, man, yo, cuz just called me and I ain't never heard him like that. And I ain't never, you know, I ain't never hear him talk like that or whatever. And, you know, he was worried about you and asking, talking about these niggas know where you live at. These niggas, da, 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 whatever. And I'm, I'm, I'm listening to this, right? And I'm, 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 I'm saying to myself, like, does my brother realize that he's fucking delaying threats to me? Hmm. Like he's relaying this message, but he's relaying it. You know, a little calmer than I'd like. Right. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, yeah. And I'm like, yo, what? So I told my brother, I was like, yo, I don't even live there no more. Within that week, I moved. No lie. Within that week, I moved from that particular place because the person who came to Jordan, he know I lived there. He's met me outside my apartment. So I knew for a fact that he knew. So yeah, I left. So what happened was I happened to see, I think I might've been scrolling through, scrolling through YouTube. And I seen like a, 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 a clip of somebody showed Queen, you know, a clip on, on Queen Radio of her speaking about Kenny beating up her younger boyfriend. And in the clip, she called the name Ganks. Yeah, I saw that. And I was like, oh, shit. Is this the dude? So I screenshotted it and I sent it to my brother. And I was like, yo, you know who this is? And he was like, who, Gangster? Yeah, he was on the line that time with Jamie. He had an interest in Zoom. So, so th that's how I'm connecting everything. That's how I'm putting, like, oh, so so this shit was a whole plot. 
You know what I'm saying? So that had people coming directly to me, but they also had people going directly to my family. And I'm not supposed to be afraid. I'm not supposed to fear for my life. Now you also so claim that you had you had the incoming call from Nikki because somebody in the comments said, "Why did you say you called Nikki?" She never says you called Nikki. She said Nikki contacted her. She was given Nikki's number and she never used it to call Nikki. Nikki ended up contacting. I was asked. I was asked if if the person can. Hey, yo, is it okay? You know, Nikki wants your number. Is it okay if I give it to her, or do you want me to do it on three? That's that's how. It was acts and i was like no you could give it to her right it's fine and as you see you know what i'm saying or whatever have you like while i was on the phone i was getting messages you know what i'm saying or whatever have you i just i just didn't see the messages until after the phone call you know what i'm saying or whatever have you like everybody wanted wanted something and i just wanted her to know the truth because she put a lie out there about me Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, I was so in disbelief that I was even getting a phone call from her that, you know, it didn't even dawn on me to even question her about the lie that she put out there. I'm thinking about that shit right now. Like, yo, on some real shit, that's what I should have been talking to her about. Like, yo, why are you putting a lie out there about me? But here it is, little old me. I'm out. I, I didn't. I didn't think that you know what I'm saying it's like one of those things like yo is this really happening like is this did she really just fucking call my phone but I was woman enough to let her know like woman to woman I need you to know this really happened where as far as going to LA correct no I just told you I, I said no I, I gotta know. work you said right yeah. Okay. I said and no you first. Know, you know, never heard from I said I said no first. Right. Don't forget that part. I said no. I gotta work. So I did say no. I did answer her. And no, after that phone call, I never heard from Nikki again. Nor did nor did I call her. But I did I did. The number that I had spoken to her on. I I did text her and asked her like Yo, what the fuck? Why are the marshals at my house? You know what I'm saying? This was before I knew how the marshals had gotten contact. You know, I'm clueless to all of this. I I didn't. I wouldn't have known who to contact. Right. You know, a person like me, I would have contacted the Georgia police. They probably would have been like, yo, what the fuck is she talking about? Like, what the hell? Yo, this we got a crazy girl on the line. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, so. I want to know who to contact. I'm thinking like, yo, like, are y'all, you know, I'm thinking they were fucking with me. You know what I'm saying? They have all these different lawyers contacting me. They told me I was going to be talking to a lawyer. And then it turns out it was a fact finder, not a lawyer. Like, I just felt like, you know what I'm saying? They kept fucking with me and they kept fucking with my intelligence. So let's speak about this phone call. She never asked Black why Nikki wanted to speak to her or what Black had said to Nikki to make her want to speak to her. Or how he planned on making her assault or Kenneth's charges for failing to register go away. She just takes his word for it and lets him do whatever he was going to do. When Nikki called and said, I heard you were willing to help, she doesn't even ask how, why, or who told her this, as she already knew. Black was on three-way or sitting in the room with her listening to this call for him to be texting her that he can fly down with her and to tell Nikki that it was off the strength of him, Barry. She doesn't get mad at him for telling Nikki this. And this is when she figured out that Barry had lied to her about why he had come to visit her. And he was really just trying to set her up. Yet and still, she continues to communicate with him to where he even is able to send her lawyers and investigators to speak with her since she expressed worry to him over catching perjury charges.
Jennifer then claims that the higher amounts of money came after Black's visit and she had to ask him about it because she thought that he was talking to people about whatever these two had discussed regarding this recant. So obviously money had to have been spoken about before she heard of these higher offers to even be calling them higher offers and to even be asking who Black had been talking to since now she was getting other offers elsewhere. To which he had to tell her that it was all a lie. Kenneth didn't have that amount of money. Nikki wouldn't give it to him and to just ignore it. She also allowed Black to come to her house after all of this with the $20,000 he showed to her on that FaceTime, which is when she finally declines to him that she wanted to recant which makes it look like she just didn't like the offer, not what she had to do for it, or it would have never made it this far. She would have stopped talking to Black after that phone call with Nikki when she claims she was made aware what he was up to, but she didn't. Furthermore, she never accuses Kenneth of sending Black to do anything on his behalf. All three of them have denied Kenneth's knowledge of any of this happening until he got that call from Black. And the only thing he did was pass off the number that they wanted while telling Black to leave Jennifer alone. She actually accuses Nikki of sending Black to her house with that $20,000 and of him being in contact with Nikki, all of which we can see Black never ever was. Even the receipt she provided proves that. Now, when we get to gangster, this entire story makes no sense. If she did not know Gangster was involved until she heard his name on Queen Radio, how did hearing his name on that show trigger anything in her when she had no idea of his name when she heard of this call with Jamie from her brother that Gangster was allegedly a part of? Why was she even watching Queen Radio as nobody had made that clip of Gangster a big deal until after she had came out telling us this story about harassment for a recan? When it comes to Jamie, I'm not sure what harassment, threats, intimidation, or if he ever said anything about any money offers ever occurred because these text messages she provided of the conversation she had between her and her brother basically says that Jamie is a friend of the family when whatever came across him, he was just trying to see if there was anything to talk about. And when her brother told him that Jennifer wasn't messing with any of this, Jamie left everything alone. And he says he doesn't know Zoo and he doesn't even know Jennifer like that. So I, I just, I don't know what to say about Jamie. So not only this, but apparently Jennifer's brother was also involved with whatever plotting or planning was going on here for if Jennifer actually went through with this recan for Jennifer to be able to tell the Daily Beast what everybody apparently wanted out of the situation if she did go through with the recan. Because in other words, I don't understand the reasons why they would be sitting around talking about wanting a walkthrough at a club and for Nikki to come to a black 16 year old's birthday party unless they had all been sitting around talking about Jennifer recanning and what they could get out of it if they got her to do it. Hmm. So remember that Jennifer has already stated that Black was the one who sent the attorneys and the investigators to her. So in this lawsuit, I want you guys to pay attention to the title of this document at the top. She claims that defendant Minaj sends lawyers and investigators to her house, but she starts the statements off with Kenneth sending the fact finder investigator Charles to her. And in these messages from Charles, he outright states that he had been speaking with Black, 
not Kenneth, and that he was not a lawyer. He did not represent Kenneth. He was just a fact finder and an investigator who just happened to be working for Kenneth's lawyers. And his job was to put Jennifer in touch with a New York lawyer if she chose to go through with doing this recant. And he was only there to answer any questions or concerns she may have and let her know that she could not get in trouble for committing perjury. To which Jennifer sat here and was just upset about the fact that he wasn't a lawyer and she rather to she rather be speaking with the lawyer about all of this and she seemed to be quite concerned with anything she said actually being put on record and obviously that would be the ultimate goal which is why I assume she really didn't want to go through with it in the end and she actually approved for the investigator to send her this lawyer and he did and she spoke with him and then she decided to change her mind that's all so I am completely confused about this entire lawyer situation and why they're even in here as obviously they did not harass, intimidate, threaten her, offer her money or ask her to recant. Each one were underneath the impression that she wanted to recant because she expressed a desire to, to do so and she wanted to speak with them as well. Now in the part in her lawsuit where she talks about where she suffers throughout all of this harassment, she throws at the bottom here that Nikki apparently had some lawyer contact her on behalf of Nikki. Now, this is the first time I'm actually hearing this. I didn't even notice this at first reading through this lawsuit, but we heard about the lawyer's black scent contacting you and the investigator. We heard about the lawyer who contacted you, who was on Kenneth's team, who was telling you they was trying to get him off the registry. And they were asking you about the letter that you wrote back in 1994. But we never hear of any other time when another lawyer contacted you who was sent by Nikki. What did this lawyer do when they called you? So the marshals. Now, Jennifer, did the marshal show up at your husband's job and then he called you and then you called the marshals to find out what was going on and why they were there? Or did you did they show up at your husband's job and then they came to your house to talk to you about the reason why they were there? Furthermore, did they not tell you at the time who actually called them, told them all of this and why they were there? Because I'm assuming since it had everything to do with you, they could let you know who told them these things. So you could speak to whoever you need to speak to if this happened to be untrue, right? Now, furthermore, if you told your friend and the lawyers about all of this harassment that you were receiving from Nikki and her associates, exactly why would you text Nikki to ask her why the marshals were at your door thinking that she was trying to set you up in some way? Set you up for what? Exactly, because you're accusing her of doing all of these things. So wouldn't it be kind of her setting herself up? So in conclusion, this phone call, nothing criminal happened. The phone number being given out? Also not a crime, given that both parties agreed to speak with each other. At no time do we hear of any actual harassment coming from either Nikki or Kenneth. After the phone call, the only people she was actually in touch with and hearing from was her own cousin, her own brother, and her friend Black. She never hears from Jamie besides when he wanted to know why she was lying about him all over the internet. And Gangster, she only threw in the story when she saw him on Queen Radio. As unless Jennifer heard his name when her brother called and told her about these higher amounts of money from Jamie, there is no reason for why when she heard his name on Queen Radio, she started wondering if he was the other man on the phone that day when she was asking her brother about it. And the messages... Her brother and her had say that Gangster had an interest in Zoo, but not Jennifer. When 
her brother was the one who told her during that call that Jamie and Gangster had an interest in Jennifer recanting to a lawyer for $500,000. Not that they had any interest in Zoo. And the only one who wanted to know anything about Kenneth was Jamie because he didn't know anything about the situation, nor was he even really that close to Jennifer. The lawyers she keeps lying about, Kenneth sent them, Nikki sent them, or Black sent them to her. We don't know anymore. And either way, the lawyers committed no crimes either, as they were also underneath the impression that Jennifer wanted to recant, which was the only reason they were contacting her in the first place. The only person who contacted her to recant was Black. The only one who offered her money was Black. The only one who showed up with a type letter for her to sign was black. The only person they have in this lawsuit with a receipt of subliminal threats who knows all of them is black. The only other threat she received was from alleged barbs on Twitter or Instagram because of her lying on social media. The marshals have refused to provide any statements concerning her claims to anybody who has tried to ask them about this. So we are not even sure if the marshals involvement ever really happened either. Had Nikki and Kenneth been caught by the feds actually doing any of the things Jennifer has claimed, there would have been an investigation and she would have all the proof she needed for a criminal case and they would have been arrested by now. It has been a year of these same complaints from Jennifer with absolutely no actions. So the only question left to ask is why are we in court right now with these claims that really have nothing to do with Nikki or Kenneth? Now, right now, we are still waiting on a response on both defaults. We will hear about Nikki's default first. And my opinion is that her default will be denied and the case might possibly be dismissed due to the non-proper service and the wrong jurisdiction. For Kenneth, his default will most likely be denied as well due to the non-proper service and possibly dismissed due to whether or not she really can actually come after him for an attempted assault that may or may not have happened as Kenneth was never charged with R-wording her. So if she wants to sue him for the suffering she would first have to prove that he caused any of the suffering she's alleged through the non-assault that only almost happened, according to his conviction. Meaning, she would have to prove that first he indeed R-worded her for the rest of her claims to hold any merit concerning the 1994 assault. As far as her other claims against Kittiff, they will also be a jurisdiction matter as she's also accusing him of trying to get her to not come out to speak about the 1994 assault case. Don't know when that ever happened or where or where. So she would have to prove Kenneth committed this action in New York to sue him for that in New York. She alleged he sent Black and Jamie, I guess, to negotiate the higher numbers. So again, she'll have to prove this ever even happened, which she can't. As she already stated, she has no proof of their involvement at all. So we will have to see what will happen going forward with Kenneth's case. But for Nikki, I am almost sure there is no case here. And if there is, she's definitely in the wrong jurisdiction for her claims against Nikki, as nothing she accuses her of happened in New York. And a turkey giveaway and meeting her now husband there are unintelligible claims that Nikki cannot respond to as she's allowed to do both of those things. Once the defaults are finally decided upon, then we will find out what happens next and if either of these cases are even headed for a trial. So that's where we are right now. And none of the claims for the case or any responses to those claims are relevant to this default situation as they are only deciding whether or not, <clears throat> excuse me, Nikki and Kenneth were at fault for their non-timely response to the suit. That's it. That's all. So we are only dealing with the process server and his assertions and Jennifer and Nikki, excuse me, and Kenneth and Nikki denying this event ever occurred. And until it had, 
They are not at fault at defaulting on the suit by failure to respond as they both have responded. And that's all that will matter to the judge. Not the phone call or who did what in the complaint made. That's all for a trial and them to fight it out there. So hopefully this cleared up any misunderstandings concerning this non-case that we are working with here and where we are now and what happens next. I will continue to keep you all updated and I do want to apologize to anybody I may have offended earlier underneath my community post when we were all discussing this. I understand that not everybody thinks the way I do and not everybody always understands everything the way that I do. And sometimes we all do need help, you know, understanding the situation and what's going on as this has been going on for a long time. So I completely understand that people forgot things, don't remember things, don't know what was said or don't even understand what's going on in the lawsuit, no matter how many times we go over this. OK, so I do apologize if I did get a little frustrated yesterday yesterday with anybody in my comment section who had whatever questions that they had that were frustrating me. So I do apologize about that. And if I did offend anybody, again, I am so sorry to any of you. So with that being said, I want to send a special thank you to all of those who tuned in to this video. I want to send a special shout out to all of those who actually stayed around until the end of the video. Please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to this channel. And I will see you guys later. Goodbye.